Good evening. I am Councillor Francis Guidra, the Mayor of Crawley, and I welcome you to this virtual meeting of Crawley Borough Council's full council, and welcome to members of the public and press watching this meeting live. As this is a virtual meeting, I'm going to run through the process. There will be no verbal public question time at any council meeting while virtual committee meetings are being held. However, under agenda item five, public question time, members of the public have had the opportunity to submit written questions in advance which, if received, will be read out during the item and answered by the appropriate councillor. There will be no supplementary questions. Obviously, that's not possible. For any full council meeting held virtually, all voting will be held via a recorded vote taken by a Democratic Services team member on behalf of myself, the Mayor. The exceptions are approving the minutes of the previous meeting, any other procedural item, or where the item's sole recommendation is for a committee to note the report. We will also be using group block voting, which means that the group which will be casting the votes on behalf of their respective parties, namely Councillor Lunnan for the Labour group and Councillor Burrett for the Conservative group. Before each group's block vote is sought, any members from both the Labour and the Conservative groups will be given the chance to vote independently rather than through their group's block vote. The only exception, um, sorry, the only exception of any recommendations which are required by law to be held by a recorded vote, such as setting the council tax and budget. However, there are no decisions like that tonight. Before I invite each member of the full council to confirm their attendance, I ask that they please ensure that their mobile phones are switched off or on silent, their backgrounds are appropriate and they are aware of their surroundings so that they are not disturbed during the meeting. This includes having TVs, radios and smart speakers turned off. When councillors are invited to speak, please turn your camera on, unmute yourselves and pause for three seconds to allow for the slight time delay in connection. I also remind councillors to consider which councillor is before them alphabetically so they are ready to be sent live. As with all virtual meetings, we will now take agenda items one, apologies for absence, two, disclosures of interest, and three, the minutes together. I will now ask the Democratic Services Manager supporting the meeting tonight to invite on my behalf each member of the council to introduce them. Good evening, I'm Chris Pedlow, Democratic Services Manager. Um, for clarity's sake, uh, we have Peter Nicholson, the Council's independent member, uh, the Chief Executive and a number of officers in, um, in attendance for the meeting and they'll be minuted accordingly. That being said, I will now ask each uh, member to uh, confirm their name, the ward they um, represent, any declarations of interest which aren't covered in the paper, already published paperwork, and to confirm if they're happy to approve the minutes from the 21st of October, last full cabinet meeting. Firstly, Councillor Ashcroft. Councillor Liam Ashcroft for Gossels Green and North East Broadfield. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the last. Councillor Aylings. Hello, um, it's Councillor Ayling. I'm um, the ward member for Bewbush and Warfield North. I have no declaration of interest and I agree the minutes. Thank you. Excuse me, Councillor Andrew Belbin. Good evening, I'm Councillor Andrew Belbin representing Pantel South and Worth. I have no extra declarations of interest to make and I approve the minutes of a previous full council. Thank you. Councillor Tina Belbin. Good evening. I'm Councillor Tina Belbin. I represent Pound Hill North and Forge Wood, and I agree the minutes of Wednesday, the 21st of October, and I have no declarations to make. Councillor Bob Burgess. Uh, Bob Burgess, uh, Councillor Council Three Burgess, Bridges. Can't see you. Can you not? You, um, we can see a background. Is your camera the wrong way round? I'll bring the other Councillor Bel Belbin uh, Burgess okay. in and then I'll come back. Councillor Brenda Burgess. Uh, good evening, I'm Councillor uh, Brenda Burgess, Three Bridges Town Centre. Um, I have no declarations of interest and I approve the minutes. Thank okay, you. We'll Councillor Richard Barrett, we'll come back to Councillor Burgess. Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, yes. Richard Barrett, Pound Hill North and Forgewood Ward. 
Um, I approve the minutes of the. Um, You're on, Casabara. Yeah, sorry, it keeps telling me I'm muted when I'm not. There's something, it's really not working properly tonight for some reason. Um, can you hear me now? Absolutely fine. Okay, it's, it's still telling me I'm muted when I'm not. Um, Councillor Richard Barrett, Pound Hill North and Forge Wood Ward. Um, I have no further declarations of interest to make of those of this list, um, and I approve the minutes of the last meeting. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Crow. I'm Duncan Crow, a councillor for Furnace Green. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the previous full council meeting. Councillor Eid. I'm Councillor Eid, I'm councillor for Furnace Green Ward. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the meetings of the previous meeting. And I cannot turn my microphone off for some reason. Councillor Bob Burgess, we can see you now. You're muted, Councillor Burgess. Councillor Bob Burgess, we can see you, we can't hear you. Um, Councillor Burgess is clearly been able to be seen, so we'll take him as attendance and we'll come back to him. Go on to Councillor Flack. I'm Councillor Flack, I represent Southgate Ward. I've got no declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Guidra. I am Councillor Francis Guidra, I'm the Mayor. I am the Tilgate Councillor. I have, uh, sorry, I approve the minutes of the last meeting and uh, I have no declarations to make. Councillor Hart. Uh, Councillor Julie Hart, Councillor for Ifield and Ifield West. I've got no declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the 21st of October. Councillor Irvine. Yep, uh, Councillor Ian Irvine, um, representing the <coughs> Warfield Ward. Um, no declarations of interest to make and I approve the minutes of the last meeting. That's a good check out. Good evening, I'm Kim Jaggard, Councillor for Maidenbower. Um, I have no declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Johans. Evening, Councillor Gorinda Johns for Northgate and West Green. I have no declarations of interest and approve the minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Jones. Okay, we'll come to Councillor um, Mungale and we'll come back to Councillor Jones. Good evening, Maureen Mungale, Councillor for Tillgate. I've got no declarations of interest to make and I approve the minutes. Thank you. Councillor Jones. Apologise for that. Um, I'm Councillor Michael Jones. I'm Councillor for Newbush and Broadfield North. I have no declarations of interest to make and I uh, I agree the minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Lamb. Councillor Peter Lamb, I'm the member for Northgate and West Green, one of the members of Northgate and West Green. Uh, I have no declarations of interest to make and I approve the minutes. Councillor Lanza. Councillor Bob Lands, a member for Pound Hill South and Worth. No further declarations of interest beyond those already submitted. And I agree the minutes of the previous meeting. Thank you. Councillor Lonnan. Good evening. I'm Councillor Lonnan, representing Broadfield Ward. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the previous full council. Councillor Malik. Good evening, Councillor Shahzad Malik from Blangley Green in Tashmore Ward. I have no disclosure of interest to make and I approve the minutes of the last full council meeting. Yeah, we'll just try Councillor Burgess again, see if we can get the sound up. So, Councillor Bob Burgess. Uh, Councillor Bob Burgess, Councillor for Three Bridges. Uh, I approve the minutes. I have no uh, disclosures of interest. Councillor Kevin McCarthy. 
Hi, good evening. I'm Councillor Kevin McCarthy, representing Town Hill North and Forgewood. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the last full council meeting. Thank you. Councillor Mullins. Hello, I'm Councillor Mullins, um, member for Gossip Screen and Broadfield North East. No interest to declare and I agree the last minutes. I'm very pleased to see that um, Kevin is plugged in. Councillor Peck. <laughs> uh, good evening. I am Councillor Duncan Peck and I represent the ward for Maidenbower. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Pennington. Good evening, I'm Councillor Alison Pendlington, Pound Hill South and Worth Ward. I have no disclosures of interest to make and I'm happy to approve the minutes of the meeting on the 22nd of October. Councillor Purdy. You're on mute, Councillor Purdy. Apologies. Good evening, everyone. Jonathan Purdy representing Three Bridges and the town centre. I approve the minutes of the last full council meeting and I have no declaration of interest to make. Thank you. Excuse me. Councillor Rana. Good evening. I'm Councillor Tahira Rana and I represent Broadfield. I have no declarations to declare and I approve the uh, meetings of the last full meeting. Thank you. Councillor Sharma. Good evening. Councillor Raj Sharma from Southgate and I have no further declaration of interest to make and I approve the minutes of the 22nd of October. Thank you. Councillor Brenda Smith. Good evening councillors. Um, I'm Brenda Smith. I'm a member for Langley Green and Tushmore. I've got no declarations of interest to make and I approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Councillor Peter Smith. Good evening, Peter Smith representing Ifield and Ifield West. I've got no further declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the 21st of October. And finally, Councillor Sudan. Oh, good evening, I'm Councillor Karen Sudan representing Northgate and West Green. Um, I need to declare personal interest in relation to minute five of the OSC. It's the local plan and I'm a member of West Sussex County Council. I agree the minutes of the last meeting. And for clarity's sake, we've received apologies from absence from Councillor Five Ash, Councillor um, um, Tom McClaney, um, Councillor Miller Smith has sent apologies as you'll be late, but we'll be joining later. And similarly for Councillor Pickett, he's trying to join, but there might be IT issues. So there's um, that's the remaining members of the council. Thank you. Uh, the full council has agreed the minutes of the meeting of the full council held on the 21st. Sorry about that. We're both sat um, in the same office here. Um, <clears throat> the full council has agreed the minutes of the meeting of the full council held on the 21st of October 2020 are an accurate record. Now, item four, communications. Are there any items of communications? Councillor Peter Smith, do you wish to speak on your cabinet member announcement as detailed in the supplementary order paper on page seven? Uh, no, thank you, Mayor. OK, no problem. Thank you. I unfortunately don't have any updates uh, since the last full council. Obviously, as we all know, there are many restrictions in place, so events that I can um, host are they're just not happening. Um, it makes things very difficult. Um, I hope to be able to give you some updates at the next meeting. Um, that's all I have to add. OK, <clears throat> on to item five, public questions. The next item is public question time and we have 30 minutes set aside for the item. As we are unable to take verbal public questions, we now accept written public questions in advance. However, we have not received 
any public questions in advance. Therefore, we will move on to the next item. Item six, consideration of full council recommendations and call in decisions. There are five recommendations before the council. Recommendation five, authority to approve a scheme budget and appoint a contractor for Breezehurst phase two housing development is an exempt part B report. However, I am intending to deal with this recommendation in open session. So members, please consider this fact during the uh, discussion on this item. That being said, we will now deal with recommendation one. Recommendation one, polling arrangements for May 2021 arising from Governance Committee, 17th of November 2020, page 47 in the agenda pack. Councillor Burrett, as the Chair of Governance Committee, please introduce the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I formally move recommendation one that the full council be recommended to amend the polling scheme to create polling district LAC as shown in the table of appendix A to report CEA 52. This is a very minor change to the polling scheme but because it's a change to polling arrangements it has to come to full council. It's basically to deal with one small cul-de-sac in Viewbridge which due to a mistake by the boundary commission has actually ended up in the whilst it's part of Viewbridge and North Broadfield ward it's actually ended up in the Southgate Gossip which means that it has to have a separate polling district, although voters will still vote for both elections because they will be issued with, with different ballot papers for county purposes in May. Um, they, they do have to have a separate polling district in order to do that. So it's a very minor technical change. It won't, it won't actually affect any electors in terms of where they go to vote. Councillor um, Sorry, can I just say it was a little bit um, garbled at the beginning. Can you just um, explain um, the the technical difficult, the technical change that needs to happen without all of the extra words? Because it, it was very um, difficult to hear. So if you could right. just explain, um, you know, again, why we're having to do this. <laughs> OK, I, I apologise for that. Perhaps if I sit further back, does, is that better? It's IT, it's IT. Okay. Right. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm having a few problems this evening. I think a few others are as well. Um, basically, when, yes, it, it's this is a, a technical change, is to, to deal with one particular cul-de-sac in Bewbush, Burbeach Close, which is part of Bewbush and North Broadfield Ward. But when the County Council boundary um, changes were agreed in 2017, it was actually put into the Southgate and, Cos and Gossip Green County Council, basically because of a mistake by the Boundary Commission. But what that means, is that um, electors um, in that that road will have to be issued with a different county council ballot paper to people in the rest of people because they'll be electing a county councillor for a different area. So for that reason, there has to be a separate polling district, although voters will still vote at the um, at the same polling station and it won't make any practical difference to them, but it's just a technical thing that it, they have to be listed separately as a separate polling district. So, um, it went through the governance committee with very little, um, very little discussion. And I'm hoping we can agree it tonight without any problem. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor London. I believe you are. Yep, uh, I formally second it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor London. Sorry about this. The, the mute buttons seem to be um, playing a game of their own tonight. Um, are there any speakers? OK, as there are no further speakers, Councillor Burrett, please formally move the adoption of recommendation one. And in doing so, you can use your right to reply. Your life has part. You're live, Councillor Barrett. Councillor Barrett, you're live. Okay, okay so you're on mute. mute. Um, Mine is saying I'm on mute, and I'm obviously not on mute. No, you are. Uh, 
Okay. We will now hold. Sorry, Councillor Burrick, can you hear me? Okay, have we lost him now. OK, with technical difficulties, we will move on. Uh, we will now hold the vote. Uh, on. Can you hear me now, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. very alive. Live, live TV. I'm, I'm sorry, I've gone and come back again. Can can I just explain in case it happens again? I, I don't know if this is happening to other members. What keeps happening is that not only does the view change, but I keep lose, completely losing the toolbar. And then once you lose the toolbar, it won't come back. So you can't unmute yourself, turn your camera on or do anything. You're completely stuck. So I had to leave the meeting and come back in again. So. OK, if that happens again, that's happened to me. If you just click the screen, it, pop, it should pop back up again. Um, right. It's automatically disappearing. I don't know. There's a setting there. Um, I assume as it's Christmas, there are gremlins. Yeah. Um, so well, well, we will now we will now hold the uh, vote. Sorry, let's go back to the as there are no <laughs> further speakers. Councillor uh, Burrett, please formally move the adoption of recommendation one and in doing so you can use your right to reply well thank you mr mayor i don't think there's a lot to reply to other than the it issues um okay. but uh, i formally move recommendation one okay uh, we will now hold the vote on recommendation one polling arrangements for may 2021 from the governance committee held on 29th of november 2020 will, will the democratic service services plan. manager please conduct the vote Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before I seek each group's uh, block vote, can I just check if there's any members that wish to, um, in the Labour Conservative group, wish to vote independently rather than under the block vote? Please indicate now. OK, we'll proceed with the block vote. So can I ask Councillor Lunnan to provide the 14 Labour votes for this item? Labour's 14 block votes are in favour of recommendation one. Can I ask Councillor Barrett to the Conservative 16 votes? Uh, similarly, 16 block votes from Conservative group are in favour. And finally, can I ask Councillor Sudan to um, ask for her vote? Yes, for recommendation one. Sorry, Councillor Sudan, can I just put you back live again? So, yeah, my my toolbar keeps disappearing as well. Um, yeah, for recommendation one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That was unanimous. Thirty-one votes, all in favour. Thank you. There for recommendation one is agreed. On to recommendation two. Submission: Crawley Local Plan 2021 to 2037, arising from Cabinet, 25th of November 2020, page 60 in the agenda pack. Councillor Lamb, please introduce the recommendation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, I, to be honest, I prefer to defer my time to uh, Councillor Peter Smith, who as the Cabinet Member has shepherded this through the entirety of the process so far, and really is very much more on the button with the detail of the local plan. Uh, all I will say is that this local authority has to have a local plan Members of the public uh, need to be uh, aware that the absence of a local plan will mean that we're not able to take any decisions uh, really as a planning authority that we can sustain. Uh, they could all be overturned on appeal and that means having something which we know is viable. Uh, this draft local plan has been passed uh, an inspector who's given comments and the final version should as a result be compliant and it's really important we have a compliant policy so that we can protect the communities in which we live. That's absolutely fine. So if Councillor Peter Smith would like to come in. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll be very brief. Um, as as Councillor Lambs just said, it's imperative that we do have a local plan. We adopted the last one actually on the 16th of December 2015. So it's exactly five years old and we therefore are obliged by law to uh, re review it. 
And again, as Councillor Lamb said, without one, we are subject to predatory applications, which from developers and others that we may not be able to refuse under our development management process. Um, we also have the issue at the moment where the government have issued their white paper planning for the future, which is, uh, as, as this council has agreed when we passed a motion at the last council, is it contains various proposed changes that we don't feel will be to the benefit of Crawley. And if we have got an adopted local plan in place when the new changes come into place, we get to have another year before they come into into place so that is another good reason why we need to get our local plan moving on schedule so we can't afford any slippage in our schedule last time in uh, 2015 we had a con very much a consensual approach to the local plan from both sides of the chamber or both virtual sides of the chamber perhaps i should say now um, we've been very pleased to have good attendances at the local plan working group, given members the opportunity to be involved in the, in the development of the local plan. Been very pleased to have Councillor Purdy um, prepared to second the adoption of the submission local plan today. And I hope that all members will clearly understand the criticality of adopting this submission local plan today. And I hope that every single member in the chamber will support that adoption. Finally, I'd just like to say thank you to Sally Lappage, Elizabeth Brigden and the team for the absolutely massive amount of work they do coordinating and assembling this local plan. It's a, a very significant piece of work. It's very complicated and complex and all inter linked with each other, which I should speak about a bit more on the motion. So thank you very much to the team for all their hard work and for producing such a high quality plan. I um, move the recommendations and request that all members on full council support the recommendation. It's actually number one on page 62, although I think it's actually recommendation two. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, Councillor Purdy, I believe you are seconding this recommendation. Thank you, Mr Mayor, <clears throat> and I will speak on it now, if I may. The fact that the seconding of this recommendation is coming from the Conservative group illustrates that as a group, we fundamentally understand the need for the Council to have a local plan in place. The local plan is not a plan for next week, next month or next year. It is a 15 year plan reviewed at five yearly intervals for how we are going to manage the development of housing and commercial space and industry and employment and jobs in our borough. I'm therefore pleased to be able to give support to the local plan, having been involved um, as indicated by my opposite number, Councillor Peter Smith, um, for a number of years. I would also like to echo his support and thanks to the officer team, particularly Sally LePage and Elizabeth Brigden for their very hard work. No plan pleases everybody. A plan is a compromise. And I can understand and feel for some of my colleagues who are unhappy or uncomfortable with elements of the plan. And that is what we are here to do at Council, is to debate such things. But I would echo the observations made. It is important that this evening we put forward a submission locum plan that is fit for purpose and capable of being adopted. Otherwise, we will find ourselves in a difficult position as a Council going forward. And as the Chair of Planning, a chunk of those difficult decisions I am certain will land on my lap. I'm therefore pleased to second the local, local plan and I do so. Thank you, Mr Mayor.
Uh, thank you, Councillor Purdy. I was just having a mute issue again there. Uh, we have a, sorry, I beg your pardon. Um, did you want to bring that in now? Yes. Um, we've, we've got Councillor Miller-Smith has just dialed in, so we'll just check our declarations of interest, if please, for Councillor Miller-Smith. You're on mute, Councillor Miller-Smith. It's one of those nights, nice, big laptop issues. Um, thank you, I have no declarations of interest. Thank you very much. Okay, right, back to the recommendation two. We have a proposed amendment on this recommendation as detailed on page 15 of the supplementary agenda. Councillor Burrett, please introduce your amendment. Yes, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as you will see, um, I'm, I'm moving this amendment as one of the three ward councillors for Pound Hill North and Forgewood Ward. Um, and it's detailed on the order paper. And basically the amendment is to approve the local plan as it stands, but with the deletion of the Gatwick Green employment allocation in Pound Hill North and Forgewood Ward. I would begin by saying that I echo everything that Councillor Smith and Purdy have said about the need for a sound local plan. I have no desire to scupper our local plan and I certainly don't want to do anything that leaves the council in a position where it gets directions from outside and is forced to do things which we don't want to do as a council in terms of planning for the future for the, the our town and its residents. But I cannot accept the arguments in favour of this particular allocation for uh, employment land. Um, as members will be aware, a first stage consultation on the local plan took Took place earlier this year without this site. Um, as a result of issues which arose subsequently, it was added in uh, what could, could be described at the as the last minute without a great deal of consultation. It was notified to us as Ford County in November, only shortly before um, the draft was published. And yet now we're being told that we cannot possibly take it out of the local plan without the local plan possibly falling and being found unsound. Um, which I don't think is an acceptable position for us to be put in. I think we're being bounced into it, and I, I rather resent um, that, that on behalf of the residents who live in that area. If I can give some background, the residents of Fern Hill have been concerned about the proposed Gatwick uh, Green development, which has been promoted by a site promoter for a decade or more. But they've always been reassured that as the land was safeguarded for the possibility of a second runway, it's unlikely it would ever happen. This land is part of the old strategic gap between Crawley and Hawley, which no longer exists um, as a formal allocation. That has been eroded considerably due to the building of Forgewood. And of course, with the new Steers Lane development, which has now been granted planning permission on appeal, um, the urban boundary will now extend as far north as Radford Road. Similarly, we have the Hawley strategic um, business park, uh, which has now been allocated. And if you combine that with Gatwick Green, that would result in the loss of most of the area that's now known as, that's always been known as Fern Hill. It's never been known as Gatwick Green. It's always been Fern Hill. That would then mean that only the section from Radford Road to the Antlands Lane roundabout would remain as, op as open space, effectively a gap between the two towns, Hawley and Hawley, effectively the length of one large field. It's the total erosion of a gap coalescence of settlements at a time when we're told how much, in, how important diversity is, how, 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 sorry, how important biodiversity is, and yet we're, we're going to be taking away such a large piece of open countryside. It would be the loss of the last piece of large open countryside in the borough, um, fields, woodland, um, and other associated areas. Um, I know we'll be told that Gatwick Airport have long had an ambition to use it for airport parking. But I have to say, I think that, uh, and that this would be better. And yes, all right, it would be better um, than airport parking. But I think that argument is a red herring because Gatwick Airport Limited had many, many years to actually put forward an application to, um, to, to provide airport parking there. And yet um, they've never actually done so. So why should we assume that if we don't agree this allocation, part of the local plan, that it will suddenly be swallowed up for airport parking, particularly as that would require a planning a planning application, which of course may or may not be permitted. It could even easily be left as green open space, as has been the case for, for many decades. 
There's no reason why that should happen if you don't agree with Salah Hayek. I fully understand the economic needs and the, the need to regenerate um, jobs, and services in the borough. And I've, again, I've got no desire to make it worse for our residents in terms of the economy. But I cannot accept the argument that we somehow need to concrete over the last remaining large piece of countryside in the borough on the grounds that if we don't do it, we would lose the local plan when actually that site wasn't even identified in the first draft of the local plan. Again, we'll be told there'll be a six week public consultation in January, and that's great. But how meaningful will that consultation be? If the vast majority of residents who respond come back and say, no, we don't want that allocation, we want to get this field, will we listen and say, actually, no, we'll take it out of the plan and, and that will be the end of it? Or will we say, sorry, it's got to stay in there because otherwise the local plan will be found unsound? I'm afraid I've got a nasty feeling I know the answer to that one. I think residents deserve better than that. I think the residents of Fern Hill deserve better. So please vote for the amendment this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Burrett. Councillor McCarthy, I believe you are seconding. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I formally second the, uh, the amendment from Richard. Um, and I can speak now or I can speak later. Which would you prefer? Well, it's entirely up to you. Okay, on. I would just like. OK, um, I'm concerned. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a large piece of green space and there's not much green space within the town. It's within our ward. And I, I can't help feeling that there were there, there are better sort of brownfield sites which are available. Um, I, I, Although I agree that we need an, a local plan, absolutely. Um, I don't believe the local plan will collapse without the inclusion of this land. This land was added at the last minute and, and I feel a little bit without adequate discussion. Um, it's not, uh, although it's describing an extension, if you like, to the business district, it's not near or or on Manor Royal, and, and that again feels wrong. It, it's, it's going to be disjointed from Manor Royal. Um, and and uh, so it sort of leads me to the, the the problem though that we've we've got Manor Royal and we're allowing retail outlets to open up on the edge of Manor Royal if, if you look around Met, Metcalf Way and stuff like that, and and they would be better in the town centre where we've got empty shops and then we could have businesses on Manor Royal or near Manor Royal, not at the other side of town where where, where they don't belong. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much all I need to say on the matter. I'm hoping that people will support this amendment and I don't believe that it will jeopardise the local plan. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. I'm intending to hold one discussion on this item, so I will open up the floor so are there any speakers on the recommendation or the pro, uh, proposed amendment? Councillor Crow. Thank you, Mr May. Yes, I'll, I'll speak to the uh, local plan and to the uh, amendment. Uh, firstly, I would like to echo the words from Councillor Smith and Purdy in thanking the officers for their work. Uh, a local plan is a very detailed and complex document and it's, very, it's certainly not very easy to put together. So can I thank both the cabinet member and the shadow cabinet member plus the local plan working group for the work that they've done alongside the officers to get us to this point uh, now. We've already heard how important uh, local plans are in terms of how they, um, they can protect areas of land from predatory uh, development because we've got those protections in place by having our local plan. Uh, but of course, if we don't have a local plan in place, uh, other authorities have found out to their cost that um, they are not protected from such predatory development. So um, while I understand where my colleagues from Pound or North and Forgewood are coming from in terms of wanting to protect uh, their ward from development, and that I perfectly understand that, the reality is that we would end up with a significant delay to our local plan that actually risks having additional development above and beyond what is uh, listed in the local plan in other wards across the town. So I would say to members, if you are concerned about green spaces in your ward across the town, actually you need to support the local plan as it is. Now, if the amendment is carried um, tonight, uh, 
immediately that will mean that there is a two month uh, delay because everything would have to be changed within the local plan, such as the, the, the map, the sustainability appraisal, um, the regulatory assessment and supporting papers, and that alone would lead to a delay of two months, I am told by officers. And we would then have to start to re-engage with our neighbouring authorities to agree a new statement of common ground, because we would now be saying that actually we had identified some, we had previously identified um, employment lands for our needs, but hey ho, now, now we don't, so please can you um, help us out? And I strongly suspect I know what the response from our, from our neighbours uh, would be, but, but going through that process would then create a further delay. And so what these two delays would, would mean is that um, there would be an, in, an increased likelihood of the, the government's new standard methods for, for calculating housing numbers. And I appreciate there's been uh, a development on that today, and I'm not up to date with where we are, but, but the last I heard, uh, we would be able to uh, go into intermediary arrangements if we've got our local plan passed at this time. But if we delay, we, we might not. And there's a real risk that we would get additional pressures for housing numbers above and beyond what we're already able to reasonably um, deliver. Now, we would also be failing on the duty to cooperate. And we know that Crawley cannot meet its housing need, and that can be demonstrated and that's that that's fine so there is that duty to cooperate with our with, 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 with our neighbors but by there's also a duty to cooperate on employment land but we've able to demonstrate that we can meet our employment needs but then we would then be pulling that away and what that would mean is actually we would be submitting a local plan that in the eyes of the inspector was not credible and so what would end up happening is we would have a delay and what do you think the inspector would do? The inspector is highly likely to reinstate the Gatwick Green site. But in the meantime, we could have all sorts of other um, nasty and pleasant surprises that come from that delay by not having that local plan uh, passed. And there's also a risk of a judicial review from the promoter of, of the site for the, the Gatwick Green site. And if we were, um, if we had costs awarded against us, that would be a significant cost to uh, the council. And that's not a, a gamble that I would be prepared to take, because quite frankly, the odds would not be in our in our favour. So that's that's an art, those are arguments about the local plan itself. But there are further um, concerns I have about what well, you know. First of all, I don't like to lose green space. I, I really don't. So I do understand where my colleagues are, are coming from. However, we all know what's been happening uh, this year and how Crawley has been impacted pretty much worse than, than anywhere else in the country, uh, quite frankly, from the, the COVID crisis. And what it's also exposed is our over-dependency on, on aviation as well. And at this time, I cannot have it on my conscience when people in Crawley are losing their jobs. And we also have automation coming as well, where you know, that's an ongoing trend that is not going away. I cannot have it on my conscience that we would be effectively turning down an opportunity for a diversity of employment and future jobs for Crawley people. So I would urge members to support the local plan as it is. A lot of work has gone into it, and I do accept that um, the Gatwick Green Space has come um, late, relatively late in the day. But my understanding of that is, is to do with the, um, the space south of the runway being safeguarded land where we were hoping to get that designation removed. But unfortunately, we're not able to get that removed and therefore alternative employment land has had to uh, come forward. So the reality is, you know, as Councillor Purdy said, a plan is a compromise and we cannot get everything that we want. But sometimes it's better to bank what you have got, because if you gamble, the dice can be loaded against you, and I think it will be loaded against us in this case, and we would end up in a worse position than we are. So I'll, I'll leave it there, uh, Mr Mayor, and look forward to other members' contributions. Thank you, Councillor. Who's next? Lanza. Councillor Lanza. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I join colleagues in um, thanking the, the, the planning team for their excellent work on the local plan. As Councillor Smith said, it's a massive and complex piece of work. The 
allocation, land allocation we're talking about in the amendment is um, 24 acres or 24 hectares, that is 59 acres. And I, I'm speaking against the amendment and in favour of the local plan as tabled. Um, and the reason for the apparent lateness of, of this allocation is that the original intention in the local plan was to have the bulk of the Gatwick safeguarded land subjected to an area action plan, which would have um, where we would have advanced more varied proposals for the use of that land beyond um, just the second runway. And we were given strong advice from central government that we, we couldn't do that and the land had to be safeguarded, hence the revised approach in the draft local plan that we uh, see today. Now, this local plan identifies a need up to the year 2036 for 39 hectares of land, of which the 24 hectares are identified in Gatwick Green, and there isn't really anywhere else um, to allocate. I want to think now about Gatwick Airport itself. The, the COVID impact on Gatwick Airport, let's be clear, is many times greater than the impact of the recession in the year 2008 and subsequently. Many more fights have been cross, lost across Europe. I mean, in the millions, literally, as compared to the numbers lost in 2008. It's going to take time to recover. There is an opportunity here to assist with the diversification of the economy, including through the allocation of this site for industrial warehousing and distribution usage. And in a way, that kind of distribution uh, usage could assist the airport itself to diversify into the, to increase its uh, proportion of air freight. Although I concede there is strong competition uh, for that from Heathrow. And what we're talking about here within this uh, 24 hectares, it's just an allocation, an actual planning application or suite of planning applications, as the plan makes clear, would not be taking up the full 24 hectares, there would be landscaping and the like. So there would still be a degree of a buffer um, in terms of the strategic gap location. You know, and the choice here is fundamentally between leaving it allocated unchallenged for surface car parking, which is a highly inefficient use of land and contrary to our environmental policies and contrary, contrary I believe, to the environmental wishes of, of our residents as well. And yet that is what is in the London Gatwick master plan as we speak today. And there's another point I want to make is that with some people, and I understand this, the, the very safeguarding of the land for so long for a second runway is, is itself controversial. And I want to add in the fact that there is still work being on advancing the development and control consent order for using the northern standby runway for some departures to increase the capacity of the airport. It does seem to me that there should be a, a degree of give and take on this issue and that therefore if that uh, capacity increase is in, in approved through extending the use of the northern emergency runway, then it seems appropriate as well for us to argue that some of the safeguarded land for the second, so supposedly for a full second runway, uh, should be released. And this is an opportunity to argue for that release. We know from the Centre for Cities report that Crawley is the most impacted town in the country with potentially 53% of jobs impacted by, by COVID and the aftermath. We need this employment land. The local plan identifies the need. And if we don't provide it ourselves, when we are demonstrably able to do so, we also run a risk of failing in the duty to cooperate with our neighbouring local authorities who are already assisting us with our housing needs. So there could be a knock-on effect with our housing need as, as well. Um, just for people watching, just to emphasise, when we're not debating planning applications this evening. We are debating the allocation of land. So if there were to be planning applications come in for Gatwick Green for industrial warehousing employment usage, those applications would be entertained by the council because of that allocation. And as other speakers have said, the best protection long term that you can afford green spaces and the environment is to have a local plan in place. Otherwise, you can have planning applications come in on an ad hoc basis and our ability to resist those that damage our environment is severely compromised in the absence 
of a local plan. So overall, you got the choice between land not being used, land being used as a car park, or land potentially being used to improve economic diversity and to provide jobs for crawly people. I know which one I'm going to choose, and I have to advise and urge colleagues to vote against the amendment and vote for the local plan. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lanza. Very well put. Uh, Councillor Burgess, Brenda Burgess, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, please forgive me. I'm not as eloquent speaking as my colleagues. I'm just going to have to say it as, as I, I find. And could someone please explain to me how come this area appears to have been shoehorned into the local plan at apparently the last minute without apparently dis any discussions with the, the members on this side? I mean, that in itself is quite worrying. Um, I believe we have had a working group for the local plan, but I seem to remember seeing an email saying that um, it was put in afterwards. So if I have that wrong, I apologise. This is why I'm asking for an explanation which will help me to decide one way or the other what to do, because um, I wonder why the, the airport didn't put forward um, a planning application for car parking before this, and I'm wondering if um, I've heard right that if it doesn't go forward, the local plan will fall. So I'm sort of caught between these. So I'd really like an explanation as asked for as to why it appears to have been put in at the last minute and would it really fall if it wasn't included and why apparently it appears that some members on this side, especially the local councillors, appear not to have been consulted or discussed with. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brenda Burgess. Uh, Peter Smith can uh, hopefully answer that in his right to reply, and there are no further people requesting to speak. So, Kim sorry, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, Kim Jag. Uh, Councillor Kim Jag would like to speak now as well. Thank you. I'm sorry for the, the, the late thing. I, 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 I just sort of question really, and I do have concerns about this from um, an environmental issues sort of standpoint, and I do understand the, the need for the local plan, but on the draft local plan at 14.37, there's an area, a, pic, a map where the area is coloured in green and this, this Gatwick green part fits in with that, but it's classed as a biodiversity opportunity area in policy G12 and G13. Now, while these policies may not stop development, it does strike me as really bizarre to list one of the largest green open areas that we have as a bio a biodiversity environmental opportunity area, but then also list the very same area as for industrial development opportunity with HGVs, warehouse, warehouses with HGV vehicles going in and out all the time, um, most likely users. And it does seem to be rather contradictory. And I don't quite see how these two, two areas, this one area can be both biodiversity area listed on the local plan, yet also an in opportun industrial opportunity area listed on the local um, the plan. And I, I find that very confusing and I just wondered if it just shows how quickly this was slipped in at the very last minute and maybe it doesn't tie up with the other policies. So I wondered if that could be explained to me, please. Thanks, Sylvie. Thank you, Councillor Jaggard. Are there any further speakers? No, I would just like to say something myself. Um, it obviously it's an emotive subject when there is land that um, has not been developed ever. Um, it is an unfortunate thing that this piece of land is where it is. Um, if it were just grass, um, there'd be less kickback. But of course, there's uh, when it's an undeveloped piece of land, it's it's been there forever, and uh, people do get emotive, uh, emotional about the idea of of, of, of converting land into, um, you know, buildings and uh, car parks and so on and so forth. But that's the story of Crawley, and and actually, the Maidenbow was all fields at one point, and uh, I had a neighbour where I lived uh, in Northgate, grew up, uh, who 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 used to 
happily tell us that uh, everything in front of the house used to be fields. Manor Royal, uh, there are lots of uh, photographs posted regularly or memories of Crawley on the Facebook page that, of Crawley as it developed and, and this is a part of that development. I think where, where, it, where it bothers some of the ward councillors for the area is just the fact that it feels like it's kind of come along at the end but I'm sure Councillor Peter Smith will give us a, an answer. I'm sure they wouldn't have done this if they didn't have to, I, I guess is going to be the reply. Um, we have to defend this document and there are people out there with plenty of money and plenty of legal uh, representation who, who, who challenge, the, I assume challenge local plans quite regularly, so it's got to stand up. Um, but I'll bring uh, Councillor Peter Smith back in for his right to reply now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, this is uh, quite a complex subject, isn't it? Um, I'll, I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. The, the, the submission local plan that we brought forward previously had made assumptions about the need to, to preserve space for a second runway. Um, and these assumptions were that we were going to open the Area Action Plan, as Councillor Lanza described, um, to, with a view to looking at using some or all of the land for different purposes. As many of the speakers have said, we live in a landlocked borough. It was uh, mostly green fields when many of us were a lot younger and came here. Um, and the local plan is a complex jigsaw puzzle of trying to juggle all the many times conflicting needs and uses of land. Um, we are currently having to do, take action to fit many more people into the space. We're up to 110,000 and we're, we're intensifying development of housing, particularly in the town centre, but we've got to, we're obliged to build higher, to build more densely. Um, we are obliged as well to provide as much um, homes as we can to meet our need because otherwise we will be challenged by both our neighbours under duty to cooperate but also by developers if we can't demonstrate to the planning inspector that we've exhausted all possibilities in terms of finding land supply. Now exactly the same applies to employment sites. Um, we've got a, a large shortage of employment sites and of course we're facing massive under unemployment in Crawley and it makes it very very difficult not to supply employment sites at a time when we have more people out work looking for jobs and we will have people including potential developers of these sites coming to the, the uh, planning inspection and saying Crawley Borough Council have not done their job properly and have not brought forward enough employment sites when there are many available. So we have a duty to our residents and to our businesses to balance these things up and, and take a proportionate plan to inspection because otherwise it is guaranteed to fail. So essentially what's been done here, we, the officers met with the planning inspector for advice. The planning inspector suggested that our approach to the safeguarding in the first version of the plan was not sound and our interpretation of the government's policy, current policy on second runway was not sound and it had to go back I think to 2008 policy. Um, so this is why the subsequent version of the plan that we have in front of us was brought forward. Now I would like to say about involving members, we, I'm very proud that since I've been cabinet member for six years now, we have kept the local plan working group going and we have not only done that on the basis of the nominated members on that, it's been open to all councillors of both parties and the, the independents and it's been open to county councillors as well so that we can be as inclusive as possible so that people can come and at leisure discuss with officers and other members, the policies that we're putting forward, the reasons we're putting them forward, the justifications, and to put their points of view. And although this change, as uh, Councillor Murray quite correctly says, is fairly recent, 
It has been to the working group. Everybody on the council knows who the cabinet member is and who the officers are, and we're open to talk to people and listen and take their views on board at any time. So I think it is not correct to say that people haven't had an opportunity to contribute. I accept it's a shorter period, but I've explained why it is that we have had such a short period. But to go further, to take the points on board, um, the proposal in front of us, the recommendation in front of us includes a further six weeks of public consultation starting in January. This will allow not just residents and businesses to comment on the changes, but it will allow members to do that as well. So on that basis, of course, there is no need for the motion because people can come along and comment on the local plan in January. And if, if it's deemed necessary, changes could be made subsequently if we wish to do that. Um, the point on biodiversity, I've, I'm not exactly an expert on this and it is a technical question, but I've, I've read up quite a bit of it because I understand that Homes England's plan to build 10,000 homes west of Crawley on open ground, on fields, is going to increase biodiversity which seems like a bit of a contradiction or a conundrum in itself, doesn't it? But the, the, the truth of the matter is that land that lies fallow or particularly is just used for grass. You can improve the biodiversity quite easily, apparently, without even uh, while still building on the land. And I imagine that that is what is being referred to uh, on, on the uh, discussion around this site. Uh, finally, of course, the, the, the last point is that given the advice we've got, if we ignore this site and fail to put it in the, into the local plan, we'll have the same problem as we would potentially have with the airport if we don't keep preserve the safeguarding. And that will be that developers will potentially oppose the plan or take us to judicial review for not doing the plan properly. Um, the number one duty all 36 of us as councillors have to our residents is to get a sound local plan approved as quickly as we can in order to stop predatory unwanted development that would have a negative effect across our town. We've already seen that at the Maples on Rusper Road in Horsham. We've seen it in Mid Sussex at East Pottage. And if you want to support that sort of thing within our boundary, yeah, don't bother to support the local plan. But I don't think we want to see that. Our residents don't want it. Our businesses don't want it. I think the best solution to the, the, the reasonable uh, worries raised by Councillor Burrett and Councillor McCarthy is to go to the consultation in January, pass the recommendation unaltered and adopt the uh, proposed submission local plan. And I brought that to members and asked members to reject this motion, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Peter Smith. We will now hold the vote on the proposed amendment to recommendation to submission. Yeah. That's what I thought was happening. Excellent. We will now hold the vote on the proposed amendment to recommendation to submission Crawley Local Plan uh, 2021 to 2037 as detailed on page 15 of the order paper. Will the Democratic Services Manager please conduct the vote. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've just been I've been informed the Conservative group will not be using a block vote on either the amendment or the substantive recommendation to. Um, so therefore, we'll start the vote with the Labour block vote. Um, before that, can I have uh, can any member if any members do from the Labour Party do not want to um, use the block vote, please indicate now. Councillor Lunnan, can you please um, provide the Labour vote, block vote? 
Uh, the Labour block vote is against the amendment. Thank you. We will now um, do a recorded vote for the remaining members. Councillor Ashcroft. For the amendment. For the amendment. Councillor Andrew Belbin. Abstain. Councillor Tina Belbin. For the amendment. That's a Brenda Burgess. Oh, um, abstain. That's a Bob Burgess. Uh, against the amendment. Councillor Barrett. For the amendment. Councillor Crow. Against the amendment. Councillor Eid. For the amendment. As a guider. Against the amendment. Councillor Gerard. For. Councillor Lanza. Against the amendment. Councillor McCarthy. For the amendment. Thank you. For the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Miller Smith. Against the amendments. Councillor Ngali. Against the amendment. Also Peck. Against the amendment. Sorry, Councillor Peck, can you say that again, please? Against the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Pennington. Against the amendment. Councillor Purdy. Against the amendment. And finally, Councillor Sedan. Abstain. Okay. Sorry, Chair, I'm just working calculating the Mike. We're having a technical issue, so I will do this verbally, so hopefully I can be heard. Um, the decision was, oh, I didn't clarify, there was 14 Labour block votes. Um, so the so the carry, it was 23 for, three abstentions and six against. Oh, sorry, rephrase. S six people for the amendment, three abstained and 23 against. So the... <coughs> So the um, amendment falls. Um, I'm just we're just going to hold a second while we try to deal with the technical issue on the cameras. Please bear with us. Hopefully you can see the man now. So just to confirm, 
um, due to the technical issue, that it was six vote, votes for, uh, three abstained and 23 against. So the amendment falls, Chair, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Okay, so there, there we go. The amendment has fallen, so... You're we'll muted. Be... Muted. Thank you. Okay, so there we are. The amendment has fallen. Um, so will the Democratic Services Manager please conduct the vote on the substantive recommendation to the submission Crawley Local Plan 2021? So, So as before, the Conservative group is, uh, are not having a vote, <coughs> um, and this vote is on the um, um, on the local plan recommendation two, as shown within the original report, not amended. So Councillor London, will you please provide the fourteen Labour group votes? Block votes. Thank you. Uh, the Labour fourteen block votes are in favour of recommendation two and passing the local plan. Thank you. Councillor Ascon, your individual vote. Abstain. Councillor Andrew Robin. For the local plan. Councillor Tia Robin. For the local plan. Brenda Burgess. Abstain. Councillor Bob Burgess. For the plan. Councillor Barrett. Abstain. Thank you. I am for the local plan. Councillor Jaggard. Four. For the local plan. Councillor McCarthy. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm. Um, I'm. A, I'm going to abstain from from the local plan vote. Thank you. For the local plan. For the local plan. Councillor Pennington. Four. Councillor Purdy. For the local plan, thank you. Finally, Councillor Lissi. Four.
So the load of plan recommendation two has been carried by 27 votes for, none against, and five uh, abstentions, Chair. Thank you. Therefore, the recommendation is agreed. Excellent. On to recommendation three, budget strategy 2021-22, 2025-26, arising from Cabinet 25th of November 2020, page 62 in the agenda pack. Councillor Lamb, please introduce the recommendation. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, this, this recommendation I don't believe has actually been reserved, but we are required because of the process of this being virtual, uh, that every item is is uh, moved and seconded online. So I will keep it brief as no one has actually asked me to speak about this. Um, this is not, um, as members of the public may have recently heard, about the actual proposals for how we deal with the budget deficit this year, uh, although it does specify in some detail what that deficit is and how it came about coming out of this year's uh, terrible conditions that the COVID-19 pandemic has produced for local government finance. But it simply specifies how the council is going to go about uh, attempting to close that gap uh, by the time of the budget debate, which will be taking place this February, uh, that we'll be seeking to do so using essentially the, the limit of what we're allowed to put council tax up by in this tier to close that gap some way, uh, but through a combination of efficiency uh, savings and where possible revenue uh, generation as well, in addition to continuing to put money into this council's affordable house building programme. Uh, I don't think there's anything much more to say, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Crow, I believe you are seconding. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, I formally uh, second the recommendation and I will speak uh, briefly uh, to it. Um, as the leader has said, uh, this is a, a strategy, not the actual budget. We review this every year and this is to take us forward for the next four years. I've been a member of this council for 17 years now and I've never quite known a time like this, to, to be frank. Not only about the difficulties of uh, future financing of services, but also the sheer amount of uncertainty that's out there. And this makes it very difficult to plan ahead when we're looking at uh, providing services and what our future budgets will, will be. So we are right to exercise caution and we are right to exercise flexibility. So, for example, in the recommendation under, under B, we see that there is the creation of a COVID-19 support reserve, and this is separate to ordinary council reserves, because we, we don't know where we might be called upon to have to um, you know, intervene in one way or another, or whether uh, finances could get better or, or, you know, heaven forbid, uh, worse still. So I welcome this setting up of this COVID um, specific uh, reserve. I also welcome under Part D um, the flexibility in allowing a four year period to be able to balance the budget. You know, we, we, we're hopeful things will get better. You know, people are starting to be to, to be vaccinated and, you know, if things go particularly well, uh, Things could be much, much better from uh, later next year, but we can't be certain of that at this time. And therefore, we it is right to have that flexibility to be able to not necessarily balance a budget in any given year, as long as we are doing so over a four year period. Now, it's not just a difficult time for this council, it's a difficult time for local government as a whole. And of course, the central government as well. So we know the county council have got the same problem. And indeed, Croydon Council have had to issue a section 114 notice, given how dire it has been there. So we're, we'll be right to, to pass this strategy and recognise that we are in very difficult and uncertain times and caution and flexibility and making savings that we can and if we do get any extra coming in to put that into reserves because we've had quite a few rainy days but I suspect we've got a few more to come. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Crow. Um, now we come to any speakers and Councillor Irvine is, is first in line. 
Sorry, Mr. Mayor, that's a technical issue. I don't want to speak on this item. Ah, I beg your pardon. Yeah. Yeah, technical issues are the order of the day, apparently. Um, OK, so are there any further speakers? None? None at all. OK, as there are no further speakers, Councillor Lamb, please formally move the adoption of Recommendation 3, and in doing so, you can use your right to reply. Uh, well, I formally move the adoption, and I'd like to thank Councillor Crow uh, and uh, his group for their support in moving ahead on this this year. It's certainly a challenging for all of us, and I think the cross-party approach is certainly something that residents have come to expect of us uh, in these uncertain times. Thank you, Councillor Lamb. Completely agree. We will now hold the vote on Recommendation 3, Budget Strategy 2021-22 to 2025 26 from the cabinet held on the 29th of November 2020. Will the Democratic Services Manager please conduct the vote? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before I start the block vote, can I just check with any members of the Labour or Conservative Party who are wanting to vote independently rather than in the group block vote? Okay, so can I get Councillor Lunnan to provide the Labour group 14 member vote? Uh, the Labour Block 14 votes are in favour of Recommendation 3. I think one there. Councillor Barrett, can you provide the uh, Conservative 17 votes? Uh, in favour. Councillor Sedan. Abstain. So, Mr Mayor, the recommendation was carried. 31 votes for, one abstention, no um, um, with no objections. Okay. Motion's carried. Other than Thank the you. Carried. Thank you. Recommendation three is therefore agreed. And on to recommendation four. Appropriation of garages from the HRA to the general fund arising from Cabinet 25th of November 2020, page 67 in the agenda pack. Councillor Lamb, please introduce the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, well, having just moved on from the budget strategy, uh, members will be aware that with the challenging gap we have to do with this year, we've got to close uh, over £2 million worth of uh, gap between what we now have coming in and our previous levels of expenditure. Uh, the Council is very much trying to do that from the back office as much as possible. So despite the proposals uh, the other week, uh, well, last week, the majority, the vast majority, two thirds the savings are coming out of back office savings, of which this proposal will address half of it. Uh, it's, it for many, it's a simple accounting thing, but it, it represents uh, part of the problems we face in local government with restrictions around how we can use one pot of money or another. Um, at the moment, the council owns, well, it will continue to own vast numbers of garages in the town, and for historical reasons, uh, the rent from those goes into the money that's available for Crawley Housing, because it was previously part of uh, the Crawley Housing stock. The law around council finances mean that we can't use money uh, that goes into that. So rent payers money for council housing uh, never subsidises council services and council services are never subsidising uh, rents with Crawley Homes. So quite often, I think when some people pass on casework and say this is why you've got a budget deficit in relation to problems they might have with their house, uh, that will never be the case. We're not legally allowed to cross subsidise that way. Uh, but because garages are not housing, uh, we are able to move that stock over to the council's uh, revenue account. Uh, and the proposal is that we do that this year and that will enable us to close uh, about a third of the overall budget gap this year just by having the rent which comes in for those garages going towards paying for services as opposed to subsidising uh, the council housing account as it currently does. Thank you, Councillor Lamb. Councillor Crow, I believe you are seconding. Uh, yes. Uh, Can I raise a point of order, uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, Councillor Irvine. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to refer to uh, full council procedure rule G6, which states in the case of a recommendation coming from the Cabinet, the leader will move the recommendation. The Cabinet member with the portfolio responsibility for the item will second the recommendation and present the item. I am the cabinet member with responsibility, so therefore I think it's my job to second. 
I'm happy, Mr. Mayor. If, Mr. if Councillor Irvine wishes to uh, second the recommendation. That's fabulous. That, I really do appreciate that, Councillor Crown and Councillor Irvine. I understand what you're saying. Obviously, things are, are moving very. We're operating a bit differently, but we do need to follow the rules. And if you wish to follow that rule, I'm quite happy to allow that. So, if you'd like to do that, please go ahead. Well, I've always thought of myself as a as a amateur constitutional expert, so I do like to see. <laughs> you the just rules upgraded to pro. <laughs> adhered to even in difficult circumstances. Um, but I, I, to be honest with you, I've not got a great deal to add to what. Uh, Councillor Lamb has said, um, but moving the, uh, the the garage receipts from the general fund into the House Revenue account won't affect council rents because they are capped, and it will mean a receipt of £17 million from the general fund to the House Revenue account to compensate, and uh, that could be spent either on new homes or to pay off existing debt. And uh, for me, uh, New homes would be my my personal priority, but overall, this is going to make a huge difference to uh, the, the the issues we're in with the general fund, and uh, I, I just hope everyone votes for it because it would just uh, do a, a, a great deal of good for the council. Thank you, Councillor Irvine. Um, I now open the floor to any speakers, and I'll bring in Councillor Crow first of all, if if that's okay. Yes, thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Mayor and Councillor Irvine will be pleased to hear that the Conservative group will be supporting the uh, recommendation. Um, as, as has already been, been explained, uh, this is uh, what's to do with, with, with accounting, uh, but it enables us to support our general fund much uh, better. And in fact, I sort of do have to wonder myself why we didn't uh, do this sooner, but of course, um, the the needs this year have really helped to uh, focus minds. And yes, we're, we're having to do some difficult decisions, but this is one that, um, to put it bluntly, is a bit of a, of a, of a no-brainer. And, and why wouldn't we uh, do it if this can meet a significant part of our budget deficit? So therefore, very pleased to support this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Crow. Councillor Miller-Smith. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, nice. everything's really been said, but I would bring in one thing that um, I know uh, was a concern of mine when we initially, when this was initially suggested, and I think uh, Councillor Irving as well had this on his radar. We both sort of were wanting to make sure about the fact that although um, you know maintenance and repairs will still be undertaken. Uh, by Crawley Homes, they won't be accruing sort of unnecessary debt from it because it will be recharged to the general fund. But it's important, I think, to know that that maintenance and things, which is very important, will still be undertaken um, through Crawley Homes. So, and I definitely support the move. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Miller-Smith. Um, as there are no further speakers, Councillor Lamb, please formally move the adoption of recommendation four, and in doing so, you can use your right to reply. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I formally move it, uh, and I have no grounds upon which to, to reply. Thank you very much. We will now hold the vote on recommendation four, appropriation of the uh, garages from HRA to general fund from the cabinet held on the 29th of November, 2020, will the Democratic Services Manager please conduct the vote? Before we start the block, Brad, can I check if there's any uh, Labour Conservative members wishing to vote independently on this item? If not, we'll uh, start the recorded block vote. Mr. So, London, can you please provide the, la uh, the 14 Labour block votes? Uh, the 14 Labour block votes are in favour of recommendation four. And Councillor Barrett, will you do the 17, or announce the 17 Labour uh, Conservative votes, please? Yeah, and 17 Conservative votes in favour of recommendation four. And finally, Councillor Sedan, will you? Abstain. Mr Mayor, that is uh, 31 votes in favour, no, none against, and one abstention. The motion, uh, the recommendation is carried. Thank you. Uh, therefore, recommendation four is agreed. Recommendation five. 
authority to approve a scheme, budget and appoint a contractor for Breezehurst Phase 2 housing development arising from Cabinet 25th of November 2020. Page 69 of the agenda pack. This is based on a Part B report. However, I mentioned earlier I'm intending to, uh, sorry, I am intending to have the discussion in open session unless any member objects. If there is an objection, please indicate now by turning on your camera and also please um, remember that this is a sensitive item, so don't mention things that might be Part B. Thank you. No, no. Thank you. There are no objections then. Just a reminder, um, obviously, please do not mention any of the contract or contractors details during this discussion. Councillor Lamb, please introduce the recommendation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I formally move it and I will uh, allow my, my cabinet member to uh, go through the, the reasons for that. Thank you, Councillor Lamb. We are going to slightly change and are allow uh, Councillor Irvine to second. You're on mute, Councillor Irvine. It's my mute button. It's got a mic. You're, you're on now. You're on now. Right. Thank you. Um, the purpose of the recommendation is to approve the expenditure in paragraph 6.5 of report CH-192 to enable the building of 85 affordable homes at Breezehurst playing fields in Bewbush. I know that this is the last recommendation to the Council of 2020. So it seems fitting that it's a recommendation that looks forward and will actually provide something tangible, a home to people. We have a need for more affordable homes in Crawley, and this recommendation is another step on the way to addressing that need. And I, I thank everyone involved for progressing this project. And I think the council will join with me and share my delight in the, the fact that the houses are proposed to be built to passive house or equivalent standard to minimise carbon emissions which again is Crawley Borough Council looking to the future and doing its bit to combat the climate crisis. So with that, Mr Mayor, I second the uh, recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Irvine. Um, I, I know there are speakers, so I will offer the first speaking slot to Councillor Crow, as he was going to be seconding, and we've, we're all, I'm obviously um, gracefully switching that, which is obviously uh, Councillor Irvine wishes to do, uh, wishes to uh, second these um, proposals, and that's fair enough. So, Councillor Cry, please go ahead. Yes, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, I too uh, welcome this provision of additional um, housing and uh, note and welcome Councillor Irvine's uh, comments about it being the last recommendation of the year and something tangible that will be uh, presumably coming forward. Uh, next year, if it can be uh, completed next year, uh, which will provide uh, much needed affordable housing uh, for, for Crawley. So uh, the Conservative Group will be supporting this uh, recommendation and um, I therefore look forward to it being passed. Thank you, Councillor Crow. Uh, Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mr Mayor. As one of the local members, I, I for, for the area that the, um, of, of the Breezehurst area that, that this, this development will happen, I really want to express real pleasure. Also, as a former cabinet member for housing myself, I, I know that this has been um, in the works for some time and I'm, I'm really pleased because what a positive thing to be able to do after all the, all, all, all the problems we've had this, and all the, all the tribulations there's been this year, it really, it really is, um, it's wonderful. I think the fact that we will actually be in a position where we can actually help reduce the, um, the housing waste in this borough is also very welcome. Um, it's, it's good news all around. So um, to, to hear um, Councillor Irving speak about it and the fact that it will also have um, uh, such good environmental credentials as well really is a pleasure for me as a local member. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Um, not only do we have a housing crisis, but we also have a, a climate crisis too. So it's incredibly positive that these houses are being built to a passive house standard. So I'd really like to, to welcome that. Um, and as has been said already, it's really nice to end um, tonight on a recommendation on such a positive note, especially after the year that we've had. Um, so I'm really pleased to be able to support this recommendation because not only will it help us to tackle our housing needs, but also helps to feed into tackle the climate emergency and to help our own climate emergency targets that we've set. And of course, just a, a quick reminder to members that there was a climate emergency scrutiny panel and uh, the report will be coming forward next year on that. But on that note, again, I'd just like to reiterate my support for this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Johns. Councillor Bob Burgess. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, actually, Councillor Johns has just take a, uh, stolen my thunder, but uh, when I heard that it was going to be a uh, passive house built, uh, it, that really pleased me. Um, We've already got some passive houses uh, built in Crawley in um, uh, Gales Place in Three Bridges. Um, and I have spoken to some of the residents there and their electricity bills are so small that um, it's, a, it's a pity that we can't build more of them, more of these passive houses. Because as Councillor John says, it will do a lot uh, to enable our you know, carbon footprint uh, to be reduced uh, and, and will be very good for, for the environment. So. I'm pleased to see that it's coming forward. Thank you. Rollins. Thank you, Councillor Bob Burgess. Councillor Mullins. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I, I just want to make a short intervention into this in that I absolutely support the passive house concept. And I was so pleased when Stevie Joyce was, I think, housing portfolio holder then to go on a visit to see those houses in Three Bridges and um, to learn to understand what they mean and, and how they would work. And the reason that I'm speaking is that we've been told by Homes England they want to build up to 10,000 houses on the, on the west of Crawley. Um, and I think we should use all our resources as a council and all our rights to consultation and input into arguing for modern up-to-date passive housing as part of that whole development um, and not just allow um, contractors to run off and build the type of houses they want but to say that we need to be as um, seeing modern up-to-date houses built to have the highest technical standards of environmental protection and and what and, and all that means so can i'm just using this opportunity mayor with your acquiescence to um, make an appeal to our officers who may be listening to this mm -hmm. to make sure that their input and and all of the, of course through the planning uh, the input is for this type of modern <coughs> standard to come forward in future developments west of Crawley I absolutely support um, this proposal specifically because it's passive housing as well Thank you, Councillor Mullins. I completely agree with you. If, if things are going to be built, uh, we need to be building to, 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 to as much as we can to modern standards, certainly environmentally. Um, OK, Councillor Ayling. So I just wanted to echo what everyone said, really. Um, as board member, I'm, I would like to support this um, recommendation. Thank you. My mute doesn't work so great when there's another speaker in the room. OK, um, as there are no further speakers, Councillor Lamb, please formally move the adoption of Recommendation 5. And in doing so, you can use your right to reply. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I formally move uh, the recommendation. I, th I think there are just two additional points I'm putting to the debate. The first is that we've had mention of passive housing 
It's worth noting actually that in addition to three bridges, we have been building passive housing elsewhere in Crawley. In fact, to some extent, it's become uh, the default nature of what we're trying to build as a way of trying to cut down uh, on our carbon emissions and to improve the quality of life for residents by cutting down their, their energy bills, uh, of course. Um, you know, if we can get things right, the first step is certainly saves money in the future, particularly bearing in mind the efforts the council is going to have to go to re retrofitting, uh, you know, almost 20% of the towns, uh, 20 to 25% of the towns housing in the form of council housing to ensure that that is able to meet the uh, national targets on carbon emissions reduction by 2050. Uh, the other aspect is that Councillor Munn spoke of, of encouraging uh, greater passive house building as part of any development in Worcester Blyfield. I should probably just say, in addition to that, that, that we're not in a point where we're encouraging uh, any development there. I think that was a reflection that if housing was to go ahead there, uh, that that housing should be built to the highest possible standards. Uh, I think we'd certainly hope that if it was built, it would be built in a way which would meet the very aspirations and needs of this town in any number of ways. So I formally move the, recommend, uh, the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lamb. We will now hold the vote on recommendation five. Authority to approve a scheme, budget and appoint a contractor for Breezehurst phase two housing development from the cabinet held on the 29th of November 2020. Will the Democratic Services Manager please conduct the vote? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can I just check before we do a block vote, if there's any Labour or Conservative members wishing to vote independently rather than through their parties, uh, their groups block vote? Please indicate now. OK, we'll start the block voting. Councillor Lannan, will you please present the 14 Labour block votes? Um, the Labour 14 block votes are in favour of recommendation five. <laughs> Councillor Barrow, please, can you... <laughs> you please provide the 17 uh, Conservative votes? Yes, thank, uh, thank you. Just to clarify, there's no radio on in my house. It wasn't me. Um, the, the, the 17 block votes are in favour of recommendation of five. And finally, Councillor Sedan. Four. Thank you. Mr Mayor, that was unanimous. 32 votes in favour, no abstentions or, or objections. Uh, OK, in that case, recommend I, uh, recommendation five is therefore agreed and it is the most wonderful time of the year. So thank you for that. We are now going to consider the notice of motion and this is where it gets a little bit complicated for people watching. As I am the mover of the notice of motion and Deputy Mayor Councillor Malik is the seconder of the notice of motion, we are going to relinquish the chair and vice chair uh, for this item during the meeting. Therefore, can I seek nominations to chair the next item? Uh, Mr Mayor, if I may, could I uh, nominate Councillor Purdy? Is there a second now? Councillor Barrett. Yes, I'm happy to second that. Thank you. Uh, are there any other nominations? No. OK, then I relinquish the chair um, and hand over to Councillor Purdy. Councillor Paddy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. We will consider the notice of motion before us this evening, which is set out on page 17 of the agenda, entitled Notice of Motion, Donating the Mayoral Board Budget to the Mayoral Charities. This motion will be moved by Councillor Guiderer and seconded by Councillor Malik. I therefore call upon Councillor Guiderer to formally move and present the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. 
I formally move uh, my notice of motion. And uh, yeah, if, if that's OK, I'd like to go into the details. Everybody knows that uh, right now. Um, we're, we're not able to live normal lives at the moment because of the restrictions, the lockdowns and all of the things that COVID has brought upon us. Our families, our friends are not allowed to gather and mingle. Uh, we've had a limited gap in, in the middle of two lockdowns uh, where we were able to, you know, go to places to eat, but it was very restricted. Um, I, I worked um, very hard with the mayoral PA, uh, Hayley, who is fabulously diligent, and uh, we tried so hard to get something organised. Um, we discussed items ranging from having a Christmas carol concert. Um, we were looking at having a uh, an orchestral um, event at the Hoth. We had a meeting about that. Uh, there was a potential for karaoke uh, event. There were um, there, there were several other things that, that we could have done as well. And each time we looked at all of the details, we we found ourselves realizing that it it just wasn't going to happen. Um, then there was the issue of obviously the uncertainty because of the way this virus is uh, is is changing what it does in which area. Uh, we 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 couldn't really make a plan to do anything. Now my uh, my two stepsons uh, they went to Manor Green, and um, the Manor Green School and College are a fabulous um, couple of schools bonded together, providing education for children with um, special educational needs, uh, physical needs as well. Um, some children with life limiting conditions. And I chose that charity because um, they need the support. This uh, COVID-19 outbreak has created problems for fundraising for everybody, and it includes them. So it's it's not just a case of my feeling we can't I can't personally do very much to raise funds for them. Um, I also know that they can't do very much to raise funds for themselves. You know, I, I mean, I'll often um, yearly go to their uh, uh, fundraising school fairs, um, you know, bring some money and uh, have a go at the raffle and hope to lose all my money. And, that, and that's how it works. So it all goes in the pot. Um, so I was stuck. And then I, I, I had a chat with some of the officers here and I just said, you know, why don't why don't we just take the money we would have spent on a ball and just donate that to the school? Um, there were some complications and that is why a notice of motion is here before us today. Um, in addition to that, with people facing redundancies, uncertainties, so on and so forth, it felt very uncomfortable. The idea that I would hold an event you know an exclusive event like a ball um, and therefore I wouldn't have gone ahead with that anyway. So therefore I, I come before you to ask everyone to support this um, uh, so that we can donate uh, what would have been spent on the Merrill Ball directly to Manor Green School and College to help them provide the things that they need to provide uh, in addition um, for their children and um, Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Guidera, before I bring in Councillor Malik, could I just ask you to confirm that you're proposing this notice of motion as a councillor and not as the mayor? Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I do need to clarify that uh, the mayor does not have a uh, an authority to propose a notice of motion. I am proposing this notice of motion as um, councillor Francis Guidra, councillor for Tilgate, but it is obviously the money's coming from that pot, but procedurally I'm proposing it as borough councillor. Thank you, councillor. Thank you, Chair. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much, councillor Guidera. <coughs> councillor Malik, can I please ask you to second the motion? and confirm if you're wishing to reserve your right to speak right. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, Chair. I do formally second the motion as a councillor, not as the Deputy Mayor. And uh, I feel Councillor Gaidra has explained the reason behind this motion very well, and uh, I don't feel the need to add anything to it, but I would like 
to say that I really appreciate Councillor Gaidira's idea for this uh, good cause, the way he come up with this idea, and thank him for giving me the opportunity to second this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Man. I will now open motion up to the floor for debate, starting with Councillor Ailing, please. Yeah, I'd just like to say that um, I'd, I'd like to support this. Um, my son went to Beerswood, which was Manor Green before or before they merged. There used to be two schools, one was Deerswood and one was St Catherine's. And my son went to Deerswood, so I know how hard, um, you know, how much, how they need the money and how, um, you know, they need the resources. Also, I work as a special legal uh, teacher in this school, and a lot of my children go to Manor Green after they leave me. Um, so I appreciate again, again how um, this school supports children with um, extra uh, special needs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Burgess, Councillor Bob Burgess, I should say. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, when I was Mayor of Crawley a few years back, I was both pleased and privileged to visit Manor Green School and Manor Green College. They were then, and still are today, wonderful educational institutions. The staff at the two establishments have always been fantastic and provide wonderful educational experiences for all the young people uh, in their charge. The youngest sister of a very good friend of mine attends Manor Green and she loves the place and she's made great strides with her educational progress, all because of the staff at the school. And her mother also speaks very highly of the place, its staff and all they do for her daughter. When the mayor chose Manor Green as his charity this year, it was a choice I applauded. applauded. But then, as we all know, events overtook us all. I refer, of course, to the pandemic we all know, but hardly love, COVID-19. Sadly, this has meant that the mayor has been very limited in the opportunity to have any fundraising events to support and promote his chosen charities, as he has already outlined. It has also meant he has been unable to experience major benefits of being mayor like the joy, the pleasure, and the enjoyment to be had through attendance at fundraising events. Now, as we all know, this is the season of goodwill, and it is also the season of giving. And with those two thoughts in mind, I realize that this notice of motion, if it is passed, as I hope it will be, is essentially a fundraising event in itself. And it looks like it could be the only fundraising event in the mayor's year. It is a motion I shall be sorry. It is a motion I shall be supporting, and I have decided to make a donation towards the charities. The donation I will make, be making is five percent, two hundred and fifty pounds. However, I would also like to encourage those of you who are considering making any charitable contributions this year, but have not yet done so, to consider joining me in supporting the Mayor's charities. I'm here referring to my fellow councillors, officers of the council, members of the public who may be watching the proceedings of this evening's meeting via the public link, anyone who picks up this recording of the meeting at a later date, in fact, anyone and everyone. If you can give, please do so. The causes are most worthwhile. Thank you very much and a happy Christmas to you all. Thank you very much, Councillor Burgess. Can I please bring in Councillor Sharma? Thank you. Councillor Sharma, you're muted. Thank you, Chairman. 
Uh, in fact, my relationship goes back as a youth and community worker, a neighbor youth worker with both of the schools when they were there in St. Catherine's. And I was responsible for providing youth provisions in each one of those schools. So it's a long relationship I've had. So I think it was no, mm, it was my pleasure last year as the mayor that it was one of my charities. And we did a lot of fundraising, but unfortunately, COVID stuck in March and as such some of my biggest events which were planned for the last few months to raise money for them could not be held. Uh, and I think it was regretful at that time. I felt very, very sad and I think I was mm, fantastically relieved and commented and complimented Councillor Gaidra, who became the mayor for choosing Manor Green as one of his charities and I think it shows the kind of thinking we do have between us, that there is a body, a group, a school, an establishment in Crowley, which has a lot of young people that are all part of all societies and us, and we have great honor to serve them. I do have a personal interest, and which is so I do have the honor of being a governor at Manor College. As such, any, any, any money that could be raised, and I think this is without any being biased as a counselor, as a youth worker, as a member of society. It's fantastic that anything that we can do to raise funds for a school, we do fantastic piece of work and we got a new headmaster there who's doing brilliant work and I really applaud the support we are getting from both sides of the party. Thank you. Merry Christmas to all. Thank you, Councillor Sharma. Councillor Crow. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And I never thought I would be saying that at a full council uh, meeting. So that's another first for but for 2020. And I do believe that uh, you do have a casting vote, but I very much hope and expect that that would not be needed on this um, occasion. 2020 has indeed been a very uh, unusual year all round. And of course, the mayoralty is no different in it having been um, so uh, un unusual. As Councillor Burgess has said, it's been um, very difficult for the mayor to um, not only to fundraise, but to also have the the, the enjoyment of the, the, the fundraising. It's uh, it's been it's been very very difficult, and I you know I, I feel the frustration of, of, of Councillor Gardner that he's not been able to to do that. But I do want to pay tribute to the mayor because I think what he has been doing is wherever he can, he's really been championing the town and its people and its small businesses at what have been really difficult times for us as a town. And so I just want to place on record my thanks that all he's been doing, he's doing everything he can. And I think that's, that's, that's fantastic. But as has been stated, he has been unable to, to fundraise. So what we have here is actually a bit of innovation from, from Councillor Gaidra. And again, I, I welcome that too. Um, Manor Green is, is, is very dear to his heart. He feels passionately about it. And this is a way that he is able to do some fundraising for him. So I, I congratulate Councillor Gaidera on bringing this motion forward. The Conservative group, and I'm sure all members will be wholeheartedly supporting it. And as the last, this is the last vote of the full council meeting of 2020, I'm really glad that we are ending on a, on a high and able to do something so worthwhile for such a deserving cause. So thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Crow. Councillor Jaggard. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, o over the years I've, I've taught hundreds of children and it, it must really be noted, I think, at this time that many of the children, but particularly those at Manor Green School, are, are struggling to understand what is happening. They're struggling to understand everything that's going on around them. And I think this is a fantastic plan and I fully support it. And, and thank you so much, uh, Councillor Gaidra, for, for putting this suggestion forward. Thank you. There are no further speakers coming forward. Um, Councillor Guidera, do you wish to use your <coughs> right of reply? Uh, 
Yes, please, Ms. Uh, Chair. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for all the kind comments. Um, the important thing here today is that uh, that we give some much needed funds to the chosen charity. And that is what we are planning. That's what I'm hoping. I'm assuming that's what we are definitely going to be doing today. Um, everything that's been said, I agree with. Um, pay a special tribute to uh, Councillor Ailing. You know, um, outside of what we do here, putting a chain on or, you know, putting on our councillor badges, everything. Uh, we, we normal human beings go about our daily lives and, um, you know, some some people do jobs. Um, it's a shame that uh, Councillor McKellen is not here. I mean, you know, some people do jobs out in out in the uh, the wider world that um, put them at greater risk with, with this pandemic going on and, and they plough on um, regardless of the risk um, because they, they feel they have to. Um, the important thing for me is that at the end of this vote, we can all um, feel a sense of happiness and pride that we've done something fabulous today. And I can tell you, having spoken to the chair, the the uh, um, the head of um, Friends of Manor Green School, um, they're, they're very excited to hear uh, about this motion. Of course, um, it is the gift. It is the gift of the mayor. Um, to forego any event next year because I would have up until you know up until May to do something but my, my feeling is that the funds are there to for the public benefit not for me to to, to throw uh, an, an event um, to celebrate it's not to celebrate me so as my father says so shall the first be last and the, the last be first and uh, I, I'll hand it back to you thank you everybody and uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, Councillor Gaidera. As I can see the debate has finished, we will move to the vote on the notice of motion of donating the mayoral board budget to the mayoral charities. I will the Democratic Services Manager please call the vote? Thank you. Thank you. Can I, uh, before we start the block vote, as ever, can I just check if there's any Labour or Conservative member who wants to vote individually rather than through their block vote? No, that being said, Councillor London, will you please provide the Labour 14 block votes? The uh, Labour 14 block votes are in favour of this motion. Councillor Barrow, will you please uh, move the Conservative 17 block votes? Uh, the 17 block votes are also in favour of the motion. And finally, Councillor Sedan, will you please um, declare your vote? Four. Thank you. Chair, that is unanimous in favour of the notice of motion. So it's carried. Thank you very much, Mr. Pedlow. I am very pleased to uh, confirm, announce that the notice of motion number one, donating the mayoral board budget to the mayoral charities, has been agreed. Um, and before I hand the chair back to Councillor Guider as mayor, I'd like to uh, express my, my disappointment of not going to a mayoral ball next year. But I think, and I would echo the points made earlier, this is a truly innovative and excellent decision on his part. One that recognises two very needy charities in our borough. And I'm certain that they will be very glad of the money and I'm certain that that would be a very significant donation um, on a par with those raised by mayors in previous years. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, may I return the chair? Thank you very much, um, Councillor Purdy. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. I don't need to say any more. Uh, you know I like to talk, but mm. um, if there was a subject I could talk about for a while, this would be it. But we must move on because time is a uh, time is running out. OK, so the next item is councillors question time and we have 30 minutes for this uh, redesigned item. 
We will start with uh, noting the two written questions submitted by Councillor Jaggard and Councillor Crow, respectively, as detailed in the supplementary agenda on page nine, which includes the responses by the cabinet member for Cab sorry, the cabinet member for environmental services and sustainability, Councillor Jans, and by the leader of the council, uh, Councillor Lamb. Councillor Jaggard, do you wish to ask a supplementary question or ask a further question? Um. No, no, I don't. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Crow, do you wish to ask a supplementary question or ask a further question? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I don't wish to ask a supplementary uh, question, in part because there's quite a lot of information uh, provided and I've not had uh, ample opportunity to, uh, to digest it all. Um, I, I do have a further question for, for question time, which obviously is up to you when you want to uh, call me in, Chair, uh, Mr Mayor. You can either do that now or call me in later, it's up to you. We can do that now as we're now moving on to question, general questions, so go ahead. OK, thank you, Mr Mayor. My question is to the Deputy Leader and Cabinet Member for Planning and Economic uh, Development, Councillor uh, Peter Smith. Um, Firstly, can I thank the Deputy Leader for providing the uh, written update in communications today uh, regarding the announcement of the Supreme Court effectively overturning the Court of Appeal decision that had uh, previously um, scuppered, for want of a better word, a future third runway at Heathrow. And the Cabinet Member uh, provided the statement primarily in relation to the local plan, which of course we were um, debating and ultimately passed um, this evening. So my actual question to him is, what are his thoughts as to what this now means for the Gatwick and its future aspirations to expand, either within the existing footprint as they are looking to do so, or indeed potentially outside of the footprint? That we all know how aviation has been uh, suffering this year and we hope it returns um, it, it's, its flying numbers as, as quickly as possible next year but really I'm just interested in the cabinet members thoughts as to the implications that today's decision uh, potentially has on the future of Gatwick Airport and its potential expansion. Councillor. Peter Smith. Councillor uh, Smith. And you're on mute. Yes, thank you, Councillor Crow. Not, not a simple question then. Um, I, I'm not sure I'm qualified to give a, a detailed technical answer, but I can give you my thoughts. Um, clearly, this process going through the courts, we've got various environmental groups challenging government policy. Government doesn't appear to have been defending its own policy. Um, when you then factor into that the unknowns related to post-COVID, where we all have many different views and ideas about whether we're going to be living in a changed world by the autumn or whether we'll all get inoculated and be back to business as usual. Who knows? Um, at the moment, it appears that we are faced with the status quo. We've had no updates from uh, Gatwick and our last update from them was they were planning to continue with the DCO process for their northern um, emergency runway usage. So I, I, I rather think that this is an interesting development but really the jury's out in terms of what happens next I think. Um, the key thing is to do what the members of this council have done which is to make sure that we've covered the current situation as comprehensively and thoroughly as we can based on the best advice we've got from our officers and pins in our local plan and, and do the best we can with that to get that approved so that we, we protect the interests of our residents and businesses and the airport itself actually and I feel that we've all done that tonight and we should be congratulated on that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Peter Smith. Do you have a supplementary question, Councillor Crow? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. If I could just come back uh, quickly. Firstly, uh, thank the Cabinet Member for his um, answer. And uh, I, I appreciate it was a bit of an open uh, question. I wasn't asking for a huge uh, technical response. That, that wouldn't have been um, fair. But uh, 
um, obviously I, I welcome his, his recognition that this is a significant um, announcement and that sort of clearly officers will need to be looking at it um, quite carefully. Where we will end up with this, um, who knows, you know, 2020 has been such an unusual year and a cabinet member mentioned that the government didn't appear to be defending its own its own policy. Well, I, I don't know, but who knows? Maybe we might still see Boris lying in front of that bulldozer by uh, when they start to, to start to build that third runway. Who knows? But uh, obviously, I think we're all keen to support uh, Gatwick from its current position in terms of its operating um, capacity, in terms of its number of passengers. I think we would just like to uh, wish Gatwick a much more successful 2021 than indeed 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Crow. Uh, Councillor Miller-Smith. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Cabinet Member for Environmental Services and Sustainability, Councillor Johns. Um, I am aware that the police and the um, security in uh, guards of the town centre, the shops and, and our businesses, um, use uh, like walkie talkies or have radio uh, communications where they're able to communicate with each other as far as um, if there's an incident, if they're you know trying to find someone or if a child is lost, if, if something's happening in the shop or, or, a center or an area. And yet our community wardens do not, they have mobile phones. And so if something is going on or if they indeed are, are um, aware of something happening and they need to inform security guards in town or the police that they need to use they need to phone them or they need to borrow even perhaps from from someone who does have one of these comms units uh, to get the message out to the others and i'm just wondering when i believe they used to have these I don't know if they're called walkie talkies, but you know, they are like walkies. They are walkie talkies um, and they don't any longer. Um, but I'm wondering if what the rationale was behind not having them. And also, would we be able to look to ensuring that they could be able to have that, that same communication so that they're all joined up together? Uh, the police, um, the, the, you know, the PCSOs. Um, the security guards in our shops and uh, businesses and our um, our community wardens. If you could give me any information about that, because I do think it's kind of lax. It, it sort of would be a much more joined up system, certainly better uh, all around if they if our wardens could easily communicate and get communication uh, quickly and directly. Thank you. Mm. Thanks. Th thank you, uh, Councillor Miller Smith. Councillor Johns. Thank you for that question. Um, I, I can say that I know that the wardens do work very closely with police officers in the local area and they're always in contact with each other. On the main point about the walkie talkies, that's something that I can look into and get back to you on and I can write back to you once I have some further details on that. If that's okay. Thank you, Councillor Miller Smith. OK, do you, would you like a supplementary question, Councillor Miller-Smith, following up from that? No. OK. Councillor Brenda Burgess. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I've got a question for Councillor Mullins, please. Um, Councillor Mullins, I'm sure you will join with me in saying how regrettable it is that some adventure playgrounds may need to close due to financial constraints. Thankfully, some will remain open and some will be refurbished to comply with the needs for unsupervised play. However, regarding those which may need to close, my question is, how were other options explored and considered, uh, for example, bringing in external providers or supporters? Thank you. Hello. Thank you, uh, yeah. Councillor Brenda Burgess. Um, Councillor Mullins, please go ahead. Yeah, Brenda Burgess, thank you uh, for the question. I mean, we are in a situation, uh, as you will be aware from the budgets, of a very difficult situation due to the COVID. Um, we're also in a situation 
where generally speaking we don't or are not able to look at the market because of its own problems due to COVID as well. And that would be the case with any other contracts um, that might due to be renewed at the moment. We are in a, um, a very unusual situation nationally um, that's never ever occurred before where there's a lot of close down and a lot of limits on how um, normal business might proceed. Um, there is no real scope in, in if you like, privatising the Adventure Playgrounds because the principle of the Adventure Playgrounds was always free play, whereas all children in the localities go to those centres and use them um, um, in the way that they, they used to do years ago. Um, sadly, we um, are getting into an investment situation need for the Adventure Playgrounds now. And Waterley at Furnace Green and uh, is to be done. Um, Cherry Lane has been done and the other two would need the same sort of resources put into them, which at this moment in time are just not there. Um, so it's just a sad tale. I mean, it doesn't give me uh, any, it gives me sad feelings mm. that, that we're in that situation, very sad feelings. And I don't want to be in that situation. And I know that there will be some uh, public reaction probably um, um, to what's happening. But we're forced into that situation um, by uh, what we, we see now in front of us um, in the figures. Um, and we just don't have the sort of investment that we would need um, to, to, to do that. However, the positive side of it all is that we will be looking um, to provide alternative unsupervised play um, in, in, in both Bewbush and in, in indeed at Brawlfield, um, where Creasy's Drive would need to close as well. We will be looking at both of those areas to do um, a good quality unsupervised provision. But recently, um, I went down and had a look, very recently actually, at uh, Bewbush. And it's just not suitable place for unsupervised play. It just isn't. And I would hate to see children going in there without any supervision because anything could happen down there. It's really out of the way and tucked away. And you, these days, you just have to look after your children. And if you send children into an area like that and you don't supervise it, that would be the first um, public criticism that you would get you know, really, if anything went wrong. So we we are not, we haven't made every decision yet. Uh, we've still got to look at what provision we can make that's unsupervised. But we are quite aware um, of the needs of locality and that's we've had some um, street play going on recently where we've um, taken over, put, taken over street, uh, what we call play streets. And we've had children playing with professionals and, and doing games on the streets like perhaps some of us used to do when we were younger. Um, and and it, obviously you've got to choose the street carefully, you can't do it in the main <laughs> thoroughfare. And, and we've had some very good results with that. So we, we are not moving away from uh, bringing adventure and excitement to our children. That's the last thing we want to do. Um, and so we are looking to see how we can best provide um, interesting activities for our children into the future. But sadly, in the meantime, um, Bewbush and Creasy's Drive are really, as they sit now, not viable. And it would be some considerable amount of money, hundreds of thousands, um, to, to do anything about that. Um, and that's just the situation we're in. Have I said enough? Yes. Yes, I, I, I've got the I've got that, um, councillor, because I do know that you care about these and things. That's why I asked you the question, um, and I appreciate the answer. So thank you very much. Thank you both. Count, uh, just to let people know, we are very fast approaching the guillotine. Um, councillor Bob Burgess, you have a question? Uh, uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, at the uh, full council meeting of the 21st of October, uh, the council um, unanimously passed a motion about the planning white paper that had been published by the government. 
Uh, one of the things that the council resolved to do was to instruct the chief executive to write a letter expressing the council's concern about the proposals and uh, seek revised proposals that better serve future planning in Crawley. Um, I'm asking, has any response been received yet? And if so, what was response? And if no response has been received, what has been done or can be done to encourage a speedier response? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bob Burgess, Councillor Peter Smith. Uh, thank you for your question, Councillor Bob Burgess. Um, the Chief Exec dutifully uh, sent a letter to the MHCLG as per the motion. Um, there has been no response received, but, but apparently this is not a surprise because it's assumed that our letter went in or the Chief Executive's letter went into the normal responses to the proposals for, by the government and we are not expecting to get any answers. Um, I'm sure you've heard as I have today that the uh, Mr. Jenrick, he was on the Today program this morning and he's going to change um, this formula for calculating these 300,000 homes and where they go. But he also said, and he was quite clear about it, he's bringing early in the new year comprehensive set of reforms forward and we've got to look forward to those. So if you want an answer, it seems to me that's it. But we know we haven't received a formal answer to the Chief Executive's um, letter. And I must say our experience in uh, recent times of sending letters to government ministers is we don't get very positive responses back at the moment. Thank you, Councillor Peter Smith. Uh, Councillor Bob Burgess, did you have a follow up? Uh, well, uh, just to say, I, I, I await with interest the uh, further details of uh, what the government are, are proposing, but uh, uh, we'll wait and see. Thank you. Thank you. Before I bring any further questions, uh, questions in, can I just sort of uh, find out how many more people are planning to ask a question if they could put their cameras on so that uh, the officer can be aware? So do we do that? We have two questions left. So I'll give members that ask permission to ask questions. Um, if the council is minded to, rather than having a guillotine, uh, having a vote in the guillotine, are members happy to have these two questions and then um, then do the last item, or would they prefer to have a uh, vote on the guillotine due to yes. the time? Yes. Yes, in terms of member indicates. Do, I think we can get these questions in. There's only two. Yeah. Is that is all members happy with that? Is there any ob objections to that? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. I, I have no objections. objections. So, no, okay. so we'll, we'll continue on. Okay. Uh, Councillor Richard Barrett. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question is for the Cabinet Member for Planning and Economic Development. Um, and I, I make no apologies for returning to the, the issue that we discussed earlier this evening. Um, in his response um, to my amendment, and I, obviously I accept the result of that and um, the fact that the local plan is going out for consultation as it stands. But in response, Councillor Peter Smith said there would be an extensive six week public consultation, which would enable residents and ward businesses and ward councillors to have their say. Um, and I very much welcome that and obviously I will be taking part in that and I will no doubt be talking to a number of residents who will be doing that. But my question for Councillor Smith is, if the strength of opinion that comes back as a result of that consultation is that people in the Fernhill area are opposed to the Gatwick Green allocation, will they be listened to? 
or will they simply be told sorry we've got to do this or the local plan will be found unsound and if that is the case what is the point of consultation this one. Councillor Peter Smith, mute button. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Barrett. Yes, I, I heard you raise that point earlier, and it's a fair point. Um, it's a point that can be applied to many, many scenarios, of course, which is, and I did refer to it in my answer, which is how do you weigh up um, one set, one group's views against another's? And the, the whole local plan itself is a balancing act, a jigsaw, a Django pile, whatever you want to call it. What I can assure you and your, and your residents, and in fact all residents, is that we will take and the officers will review and respond to every single uh, response. That's what happens with local plan consultations. They've, they've been published for the previous um, consultation. They will all be taken into account and they will be assessed and the response will be uh, published. Uh, obviously, I can't prejudge um, your, the, the outcomes. I don't know what the comments will be. People may be in favour of it because they uh, want to have jobs. Uh, people may not be in favour of it, but yes, they will all be taken seriously. I can assure you of that, and they will be dealt with by on the technical basis by our officers and decisions will be made about them. I'm sorry, I can't be more specific than that. Thank you, Councillor Peter Smith. Uh, Councillor Burrett, do you have a supplementary question? Uh, no, no, I'll just thank Councillor Smith for his answer. Thank you very much. Councillor Bob, uh, Bob Lanza. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. My question is also to Councillor Peter Smith as Cabinet Member for Planning and Economic Development. Um, I refer him to the uh, Planning Committee of 3rd of November and the application for the Longley House development which delivers, uh, I believe, 121 residential units. But there, there was a clause in there, um, and I'll read it, it's only short. It was confirmed that bedroom windows facing the Aurora Hotel would have a panel of obscured glass in the centre in order to mitigate overlooking. I'm not sure whether that means mitigate overlooking or cure overlooking or, or whatever. But uh, what I'd like to ask the cabinet member is this, that we all recognise the need for additional housing and I suppose if we were building extensions you know that might be slightly more acceptable if we felt the need to put in some obscure glazing but the idea of having obscure glazing um, to a bedroom in the first instance um, might might disturb um, some people it might seem a, a little bit desperate and uh, I wonder how far he he would see that policy going of, of allowing to what extent would he think it right to allow obscured glass in glass in the first instance in order to um, uh, support a planning application which would clearly otherwise be so compromised. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lanza. Um, I, I don't remember the specific circumstances of those windows, but I will answer you. I, I understand your point. I will answer that in the general sense. Um, Development control is, of course, as you, as you well know, um, again, it's very much a balancing act where members have to listen to officers' technical assessment against all the various rules and regulations of local plan policies against the specific application sitting in front of them. So, for example, there can be a case where something that is not ideal is actually um, acceptable in the context of a, an application that is over a, over a, what has good merit and is justified on all other grounds. So, for example, we, we, we have lots of discussions on development control about the sizes of some of the gardens in, in Forgewood where they don't necessarily comply with the standards, but the overall maybe 50 houses, it does and it does comply. So, can you reject something because uh, it doesn't comply to a specific piece of policy, just one small thing, um, you'd lose appeal if you did that because we, it's our duty to uh, assess the officer recommendation, which in this case was to permit. You have to assess that on balance and looking at the basic 
merits and dismerits of the application. And uh, we, we do have discussions about these matters regularly and our, our councillors on the Development Control Committee are very diligent at raising them uh, very thoroughly and exhaustively and we do discuss them. And, um, we took a judgment on this case which personally I support, others disagree but on balance it seemed to be reasonable. Um, the only thing I would add to that answer as well is with some of the um, permitted development uh, extensions that have been, just been allowed by the government, we such things as overlooking don't don't even count. And I would, um, if you're worried about these things, I would recommend you look at the two applications in Queen Square to put two-storey permitted development developments on top of the existing shops and see what you think about overlooking and the quality of housing in those. So yeah, I take the point, but the the, the development control committee did the correct job based in the, on the uh, planning legislation that we're working under at the moment. Thank you very much, Councillor Peter Smith. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor Lanza? Uh, yes, thank, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just briefly, I, I thank the Cabinet member for his answer. But I suppose I'd ask for his opinion in policy terms, uh, his opinion. Where do you draw the line? I mean, if the line isn't drawn on obscure glazing in bedroom windows, would you draw the line on a living room or a, or a dining room? Where would you draw that line? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you're asking my personal opinion. Um, it's actually irrelevant, my personal opinion, really, because it's all laid down in the local plan, which we've discussed today at length, and all these matters are laid, in, laid down in there. But um, you, you have to take a balanced view at the time on the specifics of the case. OK, thank you very much, thank Councillor thank Smith, you. Councillor Lanza. OK, that's the end of the uh, question period. So item nine, <coughs> receiving the minutes of the Cabinet Overview and Scrutiny Commission and Committees. I call upon the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Malik, to move the receipt of the reports uh, of the meetings as set out in agenda item 9 on page 19 and in the associated supplementary agenda. Thank you. I move that the reports of the Overview and Scrutiny Commission, Planning, Licensing, Governance Committees and Cabinet be received. Is that agreed? Agreed, everybody. Agreed. 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 Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Agreed. Mayor. Agreed. On to reserved items. We have no items reserved, so uh, that means we move on to the next item. Now, there are no supplementary items of business, but um, before I declare the meeting of the council closed, um, I would just like to thank a few people. It is Christmas. Uh, the town has been through some challenging times and um, I don't like to name names, but if I can sort of throw some stuff out there. First of all, I'd like to wish a Merry Christmas to everybody in Crawley. It's been a very difficult year. I, I hope that you can enjoy time with loved ones as much as possible, um, based on obviously whatever restrictions are in place when that day comes. Um, thank you to Crawley Open House, to the Easter team, to Giving Back Crawley, to the free shop, to Dan from Spotted and Lakeem Khan, to our nurses, to our doctors, to all of our schools, all of our teachers, all of our carers and the care homes. St Catherine's Hospice, most certainly, I have to do that for very much for personal reasons, but thank you so much for everything you do. Um, I know there are more, but we, we need to thank all of you for everything you've done over the year. I also need to uh, make sure that so that the public don't think some of us are very dodgy wardrobes. Thank those who wore Christmas uh, Christmas jumpers and so on um, during this meeting and are going to, I hope, <laughs> donate £10 to my charity. I do need to thank Councillor Bob Burgess for his very generous donation of £250 to my charity effort. And, um, you know, let's hope that next year is better because um, I think it will be. But uh, in the meantime, I, I hope that everybody has a great Christmas and thank you all very much. And I now declare this meeting closed.
Happy Christmas. Thank you. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy Christmas, everyone. Happy Christmas, everyone.